Ever wonder what it takes to live a life creatively? So do we. That's why we're here, to find out what clever people do to succeed in the arts, business, and education. I'm Cecily Korst, and this is The Trailer Talks. We're interviewing artists and educators, musicians, and thought leaders at home and on the road. So come on, it's going to be a good trip. We're back in the trailer with Ben Keen, an entrepreneur from the UK. Let's hear the rest of the story. Change starts in the village. So join us now to find out where our next community will be and become part of our story, wherever you will take us. Where did you come up with the name? Tribe wanted. Um, it came up. Oh, it came about with uh, so the, the guy that I started, had this conversation about with Arctic Monkeys. We were like, okay, so we've got uh, we've got an island. We've got a group of people online. We want to get them investing in this place and participating. So we want these people. And what are, what are they? And um, uh, I think Mark, the guy that I was originally talking about, said, well, they're a tribe, right? So they're interested in a place. There's some kind of leadership, and they've got a shared um, sort of goal, which is to, to develop this ecotourism project community and, and visit it. And that was it. So it wasn't it wasn't some sort of you know heavily researched thing. It was like, like what well, we wanted something that was a call to action. And um, yeah, that's how it started. Is there is there something in your in your past in your history that created this path for you? Uh, it's hard to it's hard to pinpoint that. It's not something I think about much. Um, I, the, the only thing I would say is that uh, you know I traveled a lot when I was growing up. My dad was in the um, in the army for a while, and so we we traveled. So I think the idea of moving around wasn't was always going to be something that felt natural to me. Um, and then I think the other thing was really I had. A, you know, I had a very fortunate um, upbringing and sense of great family, but also education. Went to a fantastic school, went to a great university, and it was the it was almost the fact that by the time I got to twenty one, and, and a lot of my friends were like, "Great, well, we're studying anthropology or politics, or it doesn't matter. We're all going to go off and go and get good jobs in the city as marketeers or accountants or or attorneys." So. That was the moment for me, and I remember being in one of these, they call them milk rounds, which is essentially, uh, you're at university and the local corporate, well not the local, but the big corporate comes along to start recruiting, and they uh, put on a load of drinks in the hotel, and you turn up, and, and one of the graduates from the college that you're at stands up and said, hey guys, you join up, you, you, you apply for a job at this, um, this company, and you can be in my position in five years, which means car, money. You know, and, and I, was like, I couldn't believe how everyone was sort of falling for this, even though they were smart people who were. So it was um, that was the moment for me. I was like, well, I don't really want that, and um, you know, I want it to be sold to me better than that. <laughs> ben, do you have somebody that you're emulating? Any role models that you'd like to talk about? Uh, there's yes, uh, I think there's there's not an individual, um, but. It's people that come and come into you know my vision and I go wow look at what they've achieved and so I think when I was when I was starting out obviously the, from an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial point of view I was looking up to the kind of Richard Branson's um, even Steve Jobs of this world but actually now I'm much more um, inspired and engaged with people my peers I guess people who are actually the social innovators uh, the adventure travelers of this world so. Um, I think, uh, who would I say at the moment I'm following? Uh, there's a great, there's an adventurer called Al Humphreys we were talking about here today, who's, who's even much more so than me, he's just dedicated his life to exploring and trying out adventures, and he does something called uh, micro-adventures, because he knows that we can't all go on these epic trips all the time, but he says all of us can go for one or two days, once a month, and do something that's completely 
different and out of our day-to-day -day sort of existence and have a real adventure. So yeah, I'm really inspired by people like Al. Um, and in the business sort of social enterprise world, I'm part of this amazing network called Think, or it's actually spelled T-H-N-K, which just started in, in Amsterdam, which is a very creative city. And they are a mixture of um, people who have been trying to do their own thing in the world, in all sorts of different areas. So there's, um, there's people from the Middle East trying to get social enterprise going. Uh, there's, there's tech entrepreneurs from Silicon Valley. There's designers from India. There's, you know, there's a real mixture of talent, and but everyone's really motivated. And it's different to, I've been to a few of these kind of tech startup spaces where everyone's hacking away trying to build the next, um, the me next, uh, you know, next big thing, and. I find, although they're exciting from a business point of view, they tend to be a little bit, sometimes a little bit soulless in the sense that you're just trying to build to sell. And, and, and that's fine if that's what, all you care about. But if you're really interested in the impact of what you're building it has on the world, the people it impacts, then, then I think that makes life a lot more richer and uh, maybe not as profitable. <laughs> but, you know, it's better for campfire stories. Um, but finally, I should say on that question is that I'm, where I'm sitting right now is the, uh, the base, the headquarters for a, and in fact they're downstairs making noise, for a, a, uh, a group called Escape City. They, they started a few years ago when they were all consultants in a, in a camp corporate in London and they were like, it's going to be more than this, well, what, how can we find jobs that are fulfilling? So they created Escape City and they now have 100,000 members and they're providing amazing opportunities and fantastic jobs all over the world. and supporting people like myself and yeah so there's th these kind of networks that I'm talking about like Think, Escape the City um, and the people we meet through Tribe Wanted it's it's a real you know it's a far it feels like it's a fast growing thing now whereas when I flew out to Fiji in 2006 we were really there weren't didn't seem to be a lot of people trying those kind of things. Who's your biggest supporter? Uh, probably my family, <laughs> in the sense that they haven't got in my way. Um, uh, now my wife, who I met in Freetown two years ago, although she's a lovely English girl from um, from London, she uh, yeah we met on the beach in Sierra Leone. Um, I'm sure we wouldn't have met in in London. Um, and uh, so yeah, they're they're my biggest supporters in the sense that they've never questioned um, what I've done, and uh, even though it's not been. You know, you try things, and, and it's clearly not in this. You know, it doesn't bring in regular income. It it is often feels like you're doing it because you really want to do it, rather than what should I be doing for other people in my life. Although it has a positive impact on people in the world, hopefully. Um, so yeah, they're the biggest supporters, and the members that have joined us as well. I mean, there's people who first signed up to Fiji. Those those crazy kids, the early adopters. They it was amazing watching the first group of. Our members get off the uh, get off the plane in Fiji because they were the kind of internet chat room um, coming to life on a beach in the South Pacific, and so the early adopters, I'm always high fiving them. What was last year's pinch me moment for you? Last year's pinch me moment. Uh, okay, so this is going to be uh, <laughs> this is per it's personal, but. Um, it kind of was a full circle moment for me, and um, it was a moment where I suddenly felt like I'd, I'd, I'd grown up a little bit, but I hadn't lost the important things. And so it was there, got married, and it wasn't the, it wasn't the church service, but after the church service, so we had a, a kind of quintessential English wedding, very lucky, you know, on the on the with the village green and the church and the duck pond and the pub and you know the whole thing. And then we went back to our back home and in the garden. And I'd managed to connect with a group of Fijian guys who live in the UK, work in the British Army. Um, and they came and I invited them to come down and we did a traditional, what's called a, a carva ceremony, where, which I'd done obviously a lot of when I lived in Fiji, where you essentially present this bag of pounded um, root plants, it's like a spice plant called Yangona. And it looks like a bag of cocaine or, or some sort of nasty powder that you should be <laughs> should be sharing in public and I presented it you know with all these Fijians dressed in their traditional um, uh, you know the, the sort of the skirts and the and so on and so forth all oiled up looking looking amazing um, 
presented it to my new father-in-law and asked him for his his blessing and thanked him for um, uh, you know welcoming all of us in, into his family. But most importantly, that the whole point of that ceremony was, as it always is with in Fiji, is that you're communicating with people who who aren't physically there. So. Uh, essentially you're communicating with the ancestors of, of the people and it's a way of almost you know by doing this little ceremony you're, you're saying to them please approve or bless this um, bless this occasion so and, and and all of nature as well so it's very much connected with the natural environment so for me it was great because we had a very traditional church service um, but then we went to the garden and did this kind of cultural um, spiritual ceremony um, and then drank lots afterwards, and uh, for me that was that was uh, a moment where if you told me ten years ago that was going to be what your wedding day was like, I would be like, bring it on, let's do that, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, Kathleen, do you have anything, have I missed anything? No. Okay, um, I'll give you the last word. Well, so here's, here's the big idea. Um, the question we've been asking the Tribe Wanted for, you know, a few years now has been what would it, wouldn't it be would it be great if we could build a um, a network around all these communities that we've we've visited either through tourism or through through groups that are doing interesting things in the world? Wouldn't it be great if we could network them in a way that was much more like a membership to a to a, a, a club or a or a gym that you can actually say, hey, listen, I'm I'm part of this global network of like-minded people, and I get to go and visit these places. And that's, that's the world we've been trying to um, enable through Tribe Wanted. And um, if you think that sounds exciting, or even if you have some feedback on that, then we would love to hear it, because uh, that's what we're trying to push out into the world. We've had three, uh, we're on to our third sort of ex experiment in terms of location, and we're bringing it into Europe this next week. And, um, but we'd like to do this all over the world, and we'd like to partner with people who, are, who think it's exciting. So um, please let us know and get in touch. Thanks very much for being on the Trailer Talks. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it really great, is. Speak, great to speak with you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a beer for us. I will do. Take care. Bye. Bye. That was a peek inside of Ben's life and journey. You can find out more about Ben on YouTube, Vimeo, and at his website, tribewanted.com. While you're out surfing, check out our website at thetrailertalks.com. I'm Cecily Korst. Join us for the next road trip.